Welcome back to Crystal Clear. I'm Altrek Vots, and now that Steve Universe Future has come to a close, we're finally able to sit down and take a complete look at Steven's various transformations throughout the epilogue series, which, for simplicity's sake, I will just refer to as his diamond transformations. Since, with the exception of the big guy, they all seem to dip their toes in the idea that Steven is becoming more like a diamond. How does his power shift and evolve with each form? And is Steven, alongside Pink by extension, the most powerful diamond? Let's talk about that. Of course, spoiler warning, if you have not finished Steven Universe Future, what are you doing? I recommend finishing everything up and then coming back to this video. With all that said, let's dive in. First things first, let's start with the transformation that changed it all, simply known as Pink Steven or his Pink State, in order to differentiate from his actual gem half. Steven's Pink State is essentially a fight or flight response kicking in. Because of the stress and trauma he endured in his younger years, his body now reacts to stress as if he's in a life or death situation, causing his body and powers to accommodate by giving him whatever he feels like he needs in the moment. His power is essentially wrapping up to a heightened stance. His strength and agility increase to the point where he essentially has super speed, creating a pink ghosting effect as the world around him slows down. When his speed increases, Steven perceives time on a different level, and he's able to either run towards his problems such as when these powers carried over the Smoky Quartz, who was able to save the Boardwalk from catastrophe, or away from his problems, such as the Crystal Gem's first crack at an intervention. In this state, Steven also sports a repressed ability from Pink Diamond, her deadly whale. Pink Pearl, aka Volleyball, mentions that this ability is powerful enough to shatter walls, which Steven mistakenly pulls off in that episode, and this could be due to, at least in part, Steven's other ability in this pink state, which causes his weight to increase if he begins to feel heavy, something that I interpreted as a sinking pit in the stomach, as shown in Together Forever when he saw just how far Kanye's considered college was from Beach City, and later in Fragments when he drops to the floor, cracking the windows, and even his frog mug. Steven also gains the ability to project his subconscious onto his television screen when in this state, as confirmed by Paradise in the episode In Dreams. As she informs Steven that his sleeping body began to glow pink in real life, as he also began to turn pink in his dreams. Though a multitude of these dreams were broadcasted, Steven only turning pink in one of them, it's currently unknown if his body began to turn pink as he was sleeping, even if he wasn't pink in his dreams. Steven is also able to broadcast his diamond shield in this form, creating a giant barrier in Little Graduation, and smaller hexagonal shields and plates later in the episode fragments, which were only easier to produce the longer he remained in in his pink form. Now, in the simple pink state, Steven still has a grip on himself and his powers, remaining partial to the Rose Court Shield and Bubble Boxing Gloves, showing that he still has restraint, which was made clear in his battle against Jasper, apologizing for any potential damage done and the use of his Bubble Boxing Gloves, but also in Bluebird. After Greg's unwanted haircut, Steven attacks Aquamarine and Eyeball. However, instead of using Bubble Boxing Gloves or just flat out fisticuffs, he summons the Rose Court Shield, knocking them around the beach shore. But while we're discussing this scene, Steven's speed of regulated descent also receives a massive boost. While he's not straight up flying in this form, he is able to stop his body from falling entirely, essentially floating in midair. However, wrapping everything up here, we now shift to his second transformation, which for simple terms, I'll just refer to as Court Steven, as he's much more muscular and rivals Jasper in height, like a court soldier. Steven achieves his transformation through his training with Jasper in the episode Frag his hair becoming much more like a pompadour, giving me Steven and the Steven vibes, but also reminding me of every shonen protagonist ever, especially if they're from a particular bizarre series. Now I see this as, because he was trained by a court soldier, he began to act much more like a court soldier, but Steven appears to be a lot more masculine in this form. Which I'm sure there's a commentary for tacit masculinity in here, but that's a conversation for another time. In his court state, Steven ironically ditches Rose Court's signature abilities entirely. Not once does he use the Rose Court Shield or his Bubble Boxing Gloves. Not even Bubbles. He instead creates a sharp polygonal structure in order to capture a fish. He receives a significant boost in strength, although that was likely because Steven was holding back before, as he mows through trees like it's nothing. Throughout the course of mastering his powers in this form, he's able to produce several hexagonal plates at an instantaneous 
his speed, and just as he was taught by Jasper, combat is the name of this Steven's game, indulging on an absolute adrenaline high as he partakes in a rematch with Jasper. Again, not only does he forsake the bubble boxing gloves, using his bare fist to fight, Steven's regulated descent, his floating powers, pretty much evolves into Dragon Ball Z rules, as I would argue he's objectively flying, not just floating, as he gives the kindergarten Kortu could a run for her money. Now, when I broke down Steven's gem half pink Steven last year, I argued that the Rose Quartz gem was the identity given to Pink Diamond Shield, but as Pink Steven was devoid of all personality, his humanity dying on the other side of the room, what we saw in Change Your Mind is what his shields and bubbles would look like if he removed that Rose Quartz flare. Essentially, he'd be able to mold it into whatever he wants, and that's exactly what he does here. In this state, he's able to form numerous plates into whatever shape he desires, and even has the capability to add spikes onto them, which he utilizes to give Jasper a swift and merciless death. But that's all we really have for Court Steven. Again, he has much better control over his powers, not enough control, but being able to use his speed and regulated descent to fly like he's Superman, that is one of the coolest things I've ever seen in the show. I feel like his hair is a product of being under Jasper's instruction, becoming more like a court soldier, while also holding great similarity to his mother's hairstyle. And that takes me to the third stage of this diamond transformation, one I simply refer to as Pink Diamond Steven, the actual diamond transformation. While it was briefly achieved in his other form, Steven fully retains his diamond eyes in this state, enlarging to the size of his mother, surpassing that of a court soldier, with his hairdo being a messy in-between of Pink's and his own. In this form, Steven loses most of the muscle he gained, although his chest still puffs out more than his belly. And although he tries to play everything off as normal, his powers are at an all-time height. That's just the best way to describe them. Nothing new really manifests, but he no longer has to be asleep for his subconscious to broadcast onto not just his television screen, but other devices. They don't even need to be close by, as Connie received an alarming video message without Steven even having to dream for it to slip his subconscious. He's able to animate dozens of plant Stevens with just the smallest hint of saliva, his speed is able to affect the objects around him, as shown with the big donut, his strength causes him to split business anvil in half when he just gave a small tap, and just being excited, not even angry, is enough to unleash one of those devastating whales. Now a lot of this has to deal with how Steven's feeling. Thinks especially due to the events of Homeward Bound, he views himself as a diamond, the last thing he wants to be. So while his powers are heightened by his denial, his insistence that everything is fine, when really he's at a breaking point, I also believe the idea of a diamond is influencing him, that they're all powerful and destructive. It impacts him and turns every little thing into this larger than life event. Last but not least, this takes us to Corrupted Steven, or Monster Steven, Kaiju Steven, whatever you want to call him. But the fact of the matter is, he was healed by his own tears and water, much like how he went about healing a corrupted gem. It's not textbook corruption, but the show is not subtle in wanting viewers to make that connection. Is he corrupted? Never mind that. This boy is absolutely massive. His gem looks like it's the size of an M&M, he completely eclipses the temple and the diamonds, and he has a multitude of pink horns, including five on his face, which is representative of the five bums designed in his hair. Look, I get it, the crew have the impossible task of making Steven the antagonist for an episode. There's only so much they can do, especially because they don't want to show Steven getting the stuff and be out of him by the gems, and they don't want to show Steven destroying everything and giving him an actual reason to feel as if he's a monster. Because of that, we didn't actually get to see Monster Steven do much, so a lot of things are only inferred, such as he access to his powers, but it could also be spun in a way where Steven's lack of destruction plays into the idea that he only felt as if he was a monster. But when the time came to Hulk out, he wasn't able to follow through. I mean, what was he doing? He was sort of attacking the temple, he didn't really have a particular attack pattern, and he spent most of the time restrained by the gems. On that note, it does seem like he retained the massive whale, as doing such a thing was a enough to push everyone back that looks similar to the energy he released in front of Jasper and their first battle during Little Homeschool. White Diamond does make an attempt to link with Monster Steven, only to claim that's not Steven anymore, which is just a horrifying statement all on its own, but I'm curious. Can Steven breathe fire? Core soldiers have fire abilities, rubies have fire abilities, the powers of a gem are typically derivative from their diamond, and you can discern which diamond had a hand in creating them due to the gem's natural color. I'm not gonna lie, I want 
wanted to see Monster Steven utilize his super speed to wreak havoc. I wanted to see him breathe fire. And I'm surprised it didn't have anything where Steven broadcasted his subconscious what's going on on the inside while everyone was trying to get through to him. I felt as if his mind powers could have evolved and claiming clutch with a great assist, but alas, we were robbed. Ultimately, I'm not really sure what to make of Monster Steven. A lot of things worked against the crew, only 11 minutes, only so much time to storyboard these episodes, and I imagine drawing everyone made it even more difficult to brainstorm cool things for Monster Steven to do. But again, I felt like a lot of his mannerisms dealt with the fact that Steven didn't really know what to do, and he was at a colossal breaking point. But maybe, just maybe, the less we know about what Steven's capable of in this form, the better. But as always, these are just my thoughts, and I want to hear yours. What do you think? Out of all Steven's transformations, which one is your favorite? Mine is definitely definitely court Steven, but that's mainly due to the awesome action sequence that accompanied this form. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, or tweet your thoughts at RoundTableVids. And for more of my own thoughts, you can find me at AustracVox. We're also on Instagram. Special thanks to Art with Coda for creating an awesome thumbnail. For more of his wonderful art, you can find him on Tumblr and Instagram at Art with Coda, and subscribe to his YouTube channel. Link down below in the description. Hope you're able to grow by either becoming a member of this channel or supporting us over at Patreon. Link in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please order a like and subscribe to the Roundtable for more great cartoon content. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have an awesome day. All Shark Fox, signing out.